uh, as you look at this next uh, image, you will see the group that works with me. Some of you know this group very well. Some of you don't know anything about it. So I'll take just a minute to, to tell you because it relates to many of the things we'll talk about tonight. I have, uh, depending on how the time goes, I have about 18 topics that I'll present to you tonight. And they're all, in my opinion, related to uh, getting back to normal. We're ready to be normal. I know you are. But a lot of countries aren't. Uh, over this uh, COVID time, uh, we presented uh, roughly 100 uh, courses, all of them different. And it has been an ordeal to just look at a glass plane as I am right now, pane. Uh, look at the white coats, they're the in vitro group. If we have a study where we're trying to find out some, uh, some question that has come into Cl a clinician's report foundation, they can usually solve that. Uh, question and give us an answer within oh somewhere between a week and a month and we'll have an answer to a simple question the in vitro group the white coats the 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 uh, blue coats are the ones who do the in vivo research and some of those projects are going on now after still going at 21 years we that's when we first started on zirconia base and the full zirconia came on about 11 years ago. And uh, of course, that's just a couple of the projects that we have going thousands of crowns. And that group really works. That, that the blue coat group is constantly looking at uh, things in the mouth in vivo. Obviously, that's what it means. So let's say it's a crown or it's a use of a laser or whatever it is. They're, they're looking at what actually happens, not what some in vitro test insinuates will happen. And the black coats are those who, who are putting the money into all the rest of the employees because uh, the uh, people who are white and blue there are all nonprofit. The black coats are the ones who help me and the staff create the videos and the courses and the seminars and, and these all these uh, virtual presentations. So that, that's just a little history for you. And uh, where are we going from there? We have a group of teachers that all these guys and girls are from North America. They donate their time to come here and help me teach. And they are good. I'd say the average length of practice in that group is at least 20 years. There are some at 50 years. There are some at 30 years. In fact, the guy I've circled there in the red is a is a guy who'll soon be giving a course with us. He's a, a man from Michigan who uh, is an eclectic general dentist. He's done ortho for 20 years. You ought to get in that course. Anyway, that group is highly altruistic. Well, I have not had a salary from, uh, from any of our research in the 45 years we've been doing it. Now, I would like to give you something I think is singularly important, and that is it. Some of the people during COVID, the dentists, have crawled under a rock and they look like those blue faces. Woe is me. The world is ending. Everything is not going to be normal ever again. I have lived through, as a child, I lived through polio. I didn't have polio, but I couldn't play with my friends. I couldn't go into anybody's home. I couldn't go to a church meeting. I couldn't do anything. I'd have to sit around and play with my little animals. I was about six years old and we were living on a farm area. I've lived through SARS. I've lived through MERS and MERS had 34% death. We're not even dealing with one half percent death in this thing we have. I lived through, a, 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 well, HIV AIDS. And we thought again, the world's coming to an end. Well. Praise the Lord, we're going downhill now. What has that done to the economy? Uh, if you look at this uh, list of the 10, 100 best jobs in the USA, that was US News and World Report. Inc. Incorporated has done the same thing. Uh, Money Magazine has done the same thing. We dropped, as you can see on the lower right, down to ninth place during COVID. But uh, 19, we were second of all professions. I often talk to uh, dentists who are e extremely enthused 
And then I talk to some, how you doing? Same old, same old. And I think you, you ought to go into selling marijuana or something where you can make some money and shut up. I, I get very frustrated. We are the best profession. Last night, I talked to a big gang of students at uh, Brigham Young University, pre-dentals. They're turned on, they're hyper, they're bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and ready to run. Uh, and uh, you should be. Look at number two on that list. Look at number four. I look at number nine. I often talk to veterinarians, number 10, and they ask me commonly when I do that, uh, how did dentists get 70% of the adult population in the USA to come to a dentist once per year? That's unprecedented. I don't care what country you're living in. Canada is probably close to the US, but many of the countries uh, are not. How did dentistry do that in the US? Education, education, education. The American Dental Association, uh, high proponents of preventive care. I, I often think as I look at some of these elaborate rehabs, and I, I by the way, am a surgical prosthodontist as well as a PhD psychologist. I often look at some of these uh, grandiose treatment plans and I think if even a fraction of that money had been spent in preventive and I'll get on some preventive with you tonight wouldn't it have been better to still have teeth and not a bunch of machinery in your mouth that's going to fail anyway uh, we're on the wrong end of the spectrum right now but dentistry has been preventive and I want you to be enthused I sincerely do uh, there is no better profession. You do what you want, when you want, if you want, for how much you want, within reason. You can do uh, civic work, church work. You can be with your family. My goodness, try to find anything even close. There isn't anything. What has happened to the state of the profession during this time? This is as of March. It's ending right now. That was in the Kipl Kiplinger newsletter. If you don't have that or one like it, you need to. I look at a half a dozen different economic uh, prognostications every month. Uh, if you, I'm not gonna go down that list, you look at it. Uh, the optimism should be there. We're not wonderful, but we're certainly not terrible. If you and your staff were to do that bottom phrase, patient education, you would have an unbelievable opportunity to grow during this time because a lot of dentists are still under a rock waiting for the golden hammer to hit them on the head. You have to be proactive. I see one of the speakers on this conference is Wendy Briggs. I'll, I'll even uh, have a little clip out of a video she made with us on that very, very topic. You have to be proactive within the patients you have. They're not gonna just wander in. Uh, because some are still reticent. Not a lot. I'm, I'm surprised at that. Not a lot. Now, as we get into uh, some of the, the meat of this talk tonight, uh, there are a couple of websites for you. Cliniciansreport.org will get you into a website that's enormous. And if you go to the bottom page, bottom of the home page, you will get innumerable articles that we have written on infection control, one by my dear wife, Dr. Rella Christensen, microbiologist, the virologist, physiologist, PhD, who uh, has done uh, more infection control research than anybody I know in dentistry, not just during this miserable COVID, but for 25 years. Some of the stuff that EPA, FDA, ADA, CDA, all of these acronyms have been saying, we proved, not me, she and her staff, we proved as long as 25 years ago. I can't even believe how far behind most of the governments are. And almost worse is our friend who, you know that. Well, bottom line then, research and education, you get about 20 uh, years of research on uh, in clinicianreport.org if you go in there and you you uh, put in a brand name or a concept or whatever you want to know about, you will get what research we've been able to find. And I think most of you know very well, we're nonprofit. We take no money from companies. We take no money from the federal government, never will, uh, because I did that. I was an educator. I was all the way from an instructor to a dean for many years of my career. And I got very tired of somebody telling what to do and when to do it. So now if we want to do a research project, we do it tomorrow. 
tomorrow. Uh, down at the bottom is the educational group and there's a lot of information there. I'll show you later what we have there. We even have an all access pass now and a couple of you, uh, uh, more than a couple, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how many are on here, but many of you listening to this tonight have the all access pass. It's essentially a dental education, not just me. I've got a lot of speakers you'll recognize every one of them on them. Well, now, a lot of products we'll talk about tonight. And uh, I would candidly say for you to want any new product, technique, concept, technology, it must be faster, easier, better, and lower cost than what you're doing right now. Uh, I, I was putting together a, another a video presentation outline tonight, and uh, it's on uh, uh, scanning. It's on scanning for fixed prosthodontics. And uh, I had to compare scanning with what? Conventional impressions. Is scanning better than, than uh, a conventional impression? I'm gonna be on scanning some with you tonight. And the answer is no. It's not better technically. I mean, you're gonna get a better impression from a vinyl or from a addition reaction silicone, frankly. Is it faster? Well, yeah, delegate the whole thing. Delegate the, scan, the scanning. Uh, you can, if, you're, if you're milling, you can even do, uh, delegate the milling and uh, they get it all ready, you glue it. So yeah, it can, be, it can be better. Is it easier? Depends how competent that staff person is. It's not particularly better, I can guarantee you. It will be. What's wrong with the scanners right now? They're too big. Uh, they're too expensive. Uh, some of them are so big, a female hand is small. I've got a little female hand myself, but I, I, you get a little saliva on there, the thing's rotating around. There's challenges with them. Is it lower cost? Are you kidding? No. Well, there are those websites again. Uh, take a look at them. Now, we, uh, Jerem has, uh, has set up this, uh, free course that we're going to donate out of uh, practical clinical courses. And he's told me that you have to be online all the way through to go through the drawing, but there's a little $2,500 you could earn tonight. Some, one of you will. Our all access pass uh, I mentioned earlier, and it is unbelievable. We, uh, we would encourage you to, to look seriously at that when you go on the PCC dental website. What about dental assisting? I often speak to groups that are interested in expanding the functions of dental assistants and hygienists and front desk people and laboratory technicians. And uh, I understand very well the economics of what I'm talking about. The American Dental Association, and I'm sure the Canadian Dental Association has similar kinds of data a uh, typical general dentist in the USA grossed in, in 2019, 19, about $1,850,000. During 2020, they grossed $100,000 less. Well, you take that number and take off the expense of running the practice and you just took off, according to the ADA, 71% in 19 and 72% in 20, that hacked off 500K just like that. Now you got whatever, 200,000 left. And the government in any of the countries that are listening here is gonna get another 40%. Therefore, how do you increase your productivity? I'm not money oriented. I've always made an obscene amount of money and I haven't even worked that hard. Uh, get people working with you. Here's my thought about dental assistance and what they need to be able to do. You can read it, I'm not gonna read most of the slides. I would say they need to be way ahead of you in thinking. When I go in to do a complex procedure, yeah, I've done a treatment plan and they've been with me. 
And it's been set up by a front desk person and they've upsold a lot of the stuff there, if possible. And then when I walk into that operatory, I want everything there. If it's a complex restorative case, uh, I know they're gonna think, well, I don't know, we might run into an endo on that one. Or uh, I can't tell if that tooth needs a post and core. It's got an old endo in, has it got any strength in it? We won't know until he gets in there and hacks off that old crown and we'll see. They should be thinking way ahead. They should have trays sitting out there for every one of the procedures that might be encountered. The bottom line is literally the bottom line. If you want people to stay with you, you have to pay them. I pay, I pay, we pay probably some of the highest salaries in the area. Why? Well, because people become family and they want as much success as you do, you dentists. If, if you have success, they're gonna have success. If you were to come into some of our hands-on courses here, you would see the average employee in practical clinical courses has been here over 20 years. We have some, uh, well, uh, Tony, the person who's helping me tonight, has been with us 37 years. Wow. When they're part of your family, they want success. It isn't, where well, can I get a little more dollar to an hour? Forget that nonsense. Pay them in direct relation to how many expanded functions they do. I could easily get you in our faster, easier, higher quality dentistry course and double your productivity, maybe in a day less than you're working now, but it has to have that group and that group. Your hygienists are your educators. If they just pick teeth, nothing's gonna happen because anybody can do that, even a dentist. If you really want some productivity, that hygienist has to be proactive. Listen to Wendy Briggs. You're going to hear a little bit of her tomorrow, I think. She may be listening to this. Let's listen to her for a second. There it comes. Can you hear it? We cannot hear it. Gordon, the volume's not working on your video. They cannot hear it. Oh, they can't hear it? What the heck is going on? Okay, then I'll narrate, uh, I'll narrate what she's saying, okay? Uh, here we go again then. Okay, Wendy is saying, Wendy is saying that the solution to this whole question is expanding what you're doing on the patients you have, getting staff to educate the patients well, getting staff to know enough to educate the patients well, uh, getting, getting your hygienists interested in uh, educating the patient and therefore the practice booms. Uh, you'll hear Wendy tomorrow, so I'm not gonna mumble on uh, at this point, but uh, there is a turn on hygienist who will get you stimulated to not just eagerly be looking for people wandering down the street. Let's go on. The, that video she did with us is the one you're seeing there, 47.99, it's available to you and it goes through uh, the characteristics that are necessary to get the hygienist motivate, motivated. We have 20 duties for hygienists, 20 duties including a diagnostic data collection appointment. Okay, there's my thought about hygienists. Look at the red. Educate patients about all areas of dentistry. Uh, I often speak to hygienists and they'll say, well, I don't need to know that. I don't need to know that. And I don't need to know that. Get me on scaling, get me on profi page, get me on uh, radiology. Yeah, you need to know that better than I need to know it. But on the other hand, you really need to know about all areas of dentistry so you can educate the patient. 
If you don't educate the patient, they don't even know what you provide. Uh, before the Great Recession, which thank goodness uh, we think is not going to happen again, at least soon, before that, about uh, 60 to 60 percent of American general dentistry was what? Was elective. What would that be? Adult orthodontics? It would be bleaching teeth. It would be veneers. It would be all kinds of facial things, including Botox. It, there's so many things that were elective. After the recession, it dropped clear down to nearly 30%. Wow. Well, in fact, we lost 27% of indirect restorations in the US during the Great Recession. What were those? Veneers, most of them. Some crowns. Okay, well, let's keep looking here. Uh, at increasing treatment plan acceptance. Okay, you want to look at that with me for a minute? Uh, we use a lot of different educational methods, and uh, I'll, I'll rapidly go down that list. Your, your most educated tool is a panoramic radiograph. Uh, that's the first thing we do when a patient, new patient comes in, and it's the first thing that goes on that monitor right in front of the face when a mature patient comes in. It's been there many times. We'll uh, point that out, show them what we're doing today. That panoramic radiograph is mandatory. Diagnostic casts, uh, some of you don't even do them. Some of you will do them on a, on a uh, that a diagnostic appointment, and, but not show them the cast to the patient for appointment later. You want to do it on the diagnostic appointment. It's sitting right in your hand. They can see it. You're missing that tooth. That one's extruded. This one's tipped over. You need that immediacy of treatment plan. The commercial models of potential treatments, I'll show you some of the best ones in a minute. They need to be in that hygiene operatory. The hygienist needs to know everything about everything that's showing on that model and they will get patients. Routine intraoral camera tour of the mouth. A lot of dentists have an intraoral camera. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking more like 80%, but half of them use it as a coat hanger. It's time to mandate that the hygienist shows the internal of that mouth every time they come in for a recare appointment. Digital photos, I'm constantly making digital photos of things that uh, we don't already have photos of. We've got thousands of photos. And it's seldom that I will not show a patient on a complex treatment plan the alternatives for care, which is in fact informed consent. You know that as well as I. Uh, we will show them the various alternatives and we will express uh, the, the, not the exact numbers of what it's going to cost, but the lowest level, the highest level, the most successful, the most questionable. And uh, uh, it's easy to say, look at Mrs. Jones here. We did this on her and this is 10 years later. Oh, okay. Books, uh, uh, if, if you can see my face, there's a whole ton of books behind me. They're useless. They only hold the bookcase down now. But in the meantime, uh, they are a, a, a nice historical orientation. I've written a lot of books. And every time I look at them, I think, wow, that's out of date. They're out of date when they're published. It takes a couple of years to get them into publication. Patient testimonials, we use that routinely. We would get a patient who's been very satisfied with their implants or very satisfied with their aesthetic upgrade or satisfied with their orthodontics. And um, we will have them talk to, by telephone, some patient who's considering a high level behavior change, like maybe whatever, 10 veneers. Uh, if, if, if they're thinking, oh, that's gonna be quite a bit of money. Well, we'll get somebody on this, had it done. What did it do for you? What did it do for you? changed my life. That, that's exactly that very, the very words I hear very often. And that can be done so well with someone in your staff if they have any of this thing done. At one time, we had a front desk person that stayed with us 25 years. And uh, I had done veneers on her early when she came. And they were going right on through that 25 years. I didn't replace any of them. And she could look at a patient and say, um, how do you feel about your smile? That's not indicting. And the patient would say, well, I don't like this and I don't like that. And it's kind of crooked and there's a space here. Wow, is that wide open for a treatment plan? Absolutely. Educational videos, we have 23 of them. Uh, 
and they're 10 minutes each, nine or 10 minutes each, and uh, you, you may play one of those. It will tell the patient the alternatives for care of whatever they're looking at. Uh, a denture, you got some alternatives for there. Wow, have you ever a lower denture? I bet you or I have never made more than one or two lower dentures when they said, Oh, that's so good. They're always whining. And last, what you put implants in educational videos are wonderful. Well, there are those 23. Look at them and see if that would help you during the hygiene appointment. I'm going to show you some cracked teeth tonight and what to do with them. What if while that hygienist is talking, she or he put on the nine minute video on cracked teeth. Now they sit up, you come in and they say, it looks like I need a crown. They've already been educated. You don't have to sit there and mumble for uh, five minutes to, and, and blow a hundred dollars to uh, explain that to them. Look at these and see the things, by the way, sealants, uh, that's in our update course this year. And 50% uh, of sealants internationally are failing within five years because they're placed improperly. They're not taking the plaque out of the grooves and they're using materials that wear down, they hit the plaque, fall off. That, that is actual data. 50% off at five years. I'm not going to go into that in any more detail. Look at those. If you want them, they're available to you. TCCDental.com. Oh boy, you need to be on this. We did a, uh, a survey of, of uh, different levels of intro cameras not too long ago. And our research team got on it quite heavily. That's in the CR report a, a year, about a year ago. And uh, you can see the brand names up here. You can see the costs. Look at the differences in costs. Can you believe that? And there's even one, I'm gonna recommend one to you in a minute that you'll love to hear about. You can see some of the real cheapos. Uh, they, they can't, they, they don't have an autofocus. They, they're uh, the furthest focus away. You can see there, you get some of the more, well, $6,000. You ought to be able to see something. I could buy a dang used car or a good motorcycle for that. You know it. Well, the, these are really different. They're sure valuable to show a patient. Some of them aren't very good either. Uh, I'll give you the ones that are best. Let's take a look here. Uh, this was a more recent study now that we did in Toronto Cameras 2020. And as you look up and down the line, I am going to put an emphasis on that one right there. At $299, it will do almost everything some of these really pricey ones will do. Uh, that one uh, is so low cost that $299 is practically disposable. And in, I mean, after a few patients, as we uh, published our, our buyer's guide for this year, uh, we picked out four products that our, our survey showed everybody thought were excellent. That was one of the four. I'm not saying anything negative about these others. They're all working. Let's bounce through them for just a second. That's the most popular one. That's a darn good camera. I have nothing bad to say about these. The only thing I was really talking about was the difference in price. And you can see that's already up to 13%. It's only been around a little while. Dexas being the most popular, Dexas is 6,000. That's 299. All right, keep moving. Uh, Dexas is good. There's digital dock, and you can even get a, 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 a carries detection orientation on that now with a little more money. That's their version three. Uh, wireless, great. Acteon, uh, this one is fairly pricey, but it will also display um, uh, plaque and uh, carries. It's got all kinds of additions, but it's a pricey one. Uh, kerosene has been excellent, wireless, easy to use. You can read that while I'm talking. And, and Carestream is one of the companies that's coming on uh, very heavily in the technological orientation. That was the original Kodak company that, that, that was slow on the draw. They thought film was going to be around forever. They were wrong. And they died and sold out their goodies to uh, Kerosene. Well, that's a good one there and a moderate price. There's the one I want to emphasize to you. Let's say you've got six operatories. I've always practiced out of six or even at one time seven. 
and uh, you're not going to have a, a major cost uh, intro camera and everyone else. Get some of these cheapos. They're, they're working well. And that one is, you know, I saw them say best. That's the best value right now, the mouthwatch. Well, how about models? Hmm. Some of you have a lot of models. I'm not talking about casts i'm not talking about impressions and making a cast or you need that too but these models are extremely important if you don't have the ability to show the patient what you're doing it's just talk as i said you can easily go to your computer and pull out something you've done to show them i strongly suggest you keep a file of of uh, patients that you've treated, and uh, not, not every patient, that's ridiculous, but anything that's peculiar. I often, since I am a surgical prosthodontist, I did both surgery for the last uh, nearly 40 years now, and also the prosthodontist. Do we refer some? Yeah, we refer some, but only those that for some reason I would prefer someone else would do. How do I decide if I would prefer someone else to do? If I look in there and I think, hmm, if I were trying to do that to me, I wouldn't want it done by me, then I'll refer it. As an example, uh, the, the car wreck or uh, the, the bilateral cleft, or, there are a lot of things I'll refer. Uh, when you start to do implants, however, Soon you refer more because you learn your limitations and they're the kind of people you refer. Get somebody you trust in the implant arena. Get somebody who has done restorative dentistry before they turned into blood. If, if they have not done restorative dentistry, they are handicapped. In most countries, when they teach implants, they teach, other than North America, they teach implants by teaching the implant placement first and then they teach the the restoration that's the way it should be somehow we've got uh, the cart before the horse here in north america it's all segregated do it yourself i get in a lot of countries where 90 percent of implants are placed by general dentists nine zero there are a lot of them 70 percent models what kind of models we did a survey and it's been, uh, I think it was last year. Bridge versus implant, multiple case model, crown crack tooth model, anatomical uh, hygiene orientation. Look up and down the line and you'll see the percent of dentists who, who have those models. I would suggest that that kind of a model is one of the better ones. If you do not know Practicon, and I think two thirds of you will, I've asked that often in live groups where I actually talk to people and not a glass screen. Um, Practicon, most of the products they have have been suggested to them by general dentists who have invented something. And they're very honest company. Some of, some of the companies aren't, I guarantee you, but this, this one is one of the truly honest ones where you take a, concept to them and you say what do you think about this and they'll they've got a panel it'll look at it and uh, give you some idea and uh, they will they will make whatever and sell it and of course you get a percentage of that the uh, practicon catalog if you were to go on the internet and pull that up you'd be amazed i'll bet half of the stuff they've got on there you would want because it's been it's been developed i mean the idea by a typical general dentist or some specialist, the Practicon model. Can you see what's on there? Uh, uh, you've got, uh, well, you've got a three ceramic bridge. You've got a porcelain fused and metal crown. You've got a gold crown. You've got a, a, a crown over an implant with a screw down through it. You've got a veneer. Look at models like that. That's not super expensive. Now that one is a little more expensive uh, but on the other hand, similarly, you've got, this is mainly uh, rest, implants and restoration of implants. Wouldn't that be descriptive to you to, uh, to have uh, some dentist be showing you, well, we put these little screws in, they mature for a period of time. And frankly, I'm going to say, let them mature for a period of time. 
I have all but one tooth in my mouth. I, I had that tooth crack and we're gonna go into cracks in a little while. And I suffered with it for a while and we amputated one root and I finally lost the tooth. Well, I had an implant placed in um, three months ago. I, I far prefer after doing hundreds of implant placements to let an implant mature. And the research is with me. So we're, we're uh, in most cases, unless it's just a really peculiar anterior where I've got to develop the pillar, I will let that mature. Mine, I'm gonna let mature at least four to six months. It's a mandible too. Well, uh, how would you like a, a dentist to tell you, okay, we could, uh, we could make a removable and after they hear about that, they don't want it. Let's go back to that other slide. See this one actually, when you put all those trinkets on there, you can put that on and show it. And they'll say, does that come in and out? Yeah, I don't want it. You know, so interesting how descriptive this is. There's a good model paradigm. Now this one's especially good. They're missing one too. Uh, you could do a three unit bridge, which I've got sitting on there. By the way, this is the biggest model company in North America. Kilgore has models of everything. Uh, if the hygienist has this and can show the patient what's going on, it's so good. You walk in and they say, well, these teeth on both sides of that, the dentist tells me that they're pretty broken down. So if I do an implant and a crown, it's going to be about the same cost as doing a three unit fixed bridge, which is true, by the way. And guess what they're going to do? They'll go to the bridge. And frankly, the bridge has got an average three unit bridge done by a competent dentist and done with the proper materials. Only a few, let, let's say upwards of 10% have been lost by 20 years. Implants aren't that good. You think they're God's gift to the profession? No. We're already seeing with implants, hmm, this is coming from Gothenburg, Sweden, a heaven of implants, that's where they were invented. And it just came out, it was published in one of your Canadian dental journals. And what we found that what they found was that by nine years, 45% of implants are having a form of peri-implantitis. And then uh, we give a whole course on that, how to salvage failing implants. Uh, John Suzuki, his son, Kevin Suzuki, and I give that course. It's coming up before too long. Tony, if you're uh, listening, you might even want to put that course on, on the chat. Um, the bottom line is, uh, in my own mouth, if I had to make a choice between an implant for one tooth and two contiguous teeth and a bridge, it'd be a toss-up. If those two contiguous teeth are already fouled up in some way and heavily restored, I'd go with the bridge, not the implant. Well, you think about it. If I do, if I do a bridge, I've got, let's use US dollars. I'd have roughly $3,000 for the bridge. If I do an implant and one crown over it, what have we got? $2,000 for the implant. $1,000 for the, for the crown. And if you do an abutment, which we're not doing many anymore, add another 600, you can see that one tooth replaced with an implant and a crown is equal to a three unit bridge in cost. Interesting, the patient needs to know all that. Now there's some cheapo deluxe ones that Amazon sells and like everything else with Amazon, be careful, be careful. Uh, why? Because uh, I don't want to get any lawsuits going, but uh, uh, I'm going to say it. They ask us to be their evaluating body, and, and uh, we weaseled out of that one. Uh, a lot of the stuff comes from here and there and everywhere, and although they have ratings on them, be careful, be careful. They do have some low-cost models you're not going to pay two or three hundred dollars for, but I guarantee you they're not as long lasting as some of the ones I've just shown you. There's my thought on patient education. You wanna grow your practice? It's not your job if you're a dentist, it's the hygienist's job. It's the front desk person's job. It's the dental assistant's job. They need to be as close to you as your family. If they're not, 
it's high time to change because your practice will never truly grow unless you have more than these two hands running your, your clinical dentistry. And they have to educate for them to do that. No question. If I sound dogmatic, I am. I've been practicing so dang long, longer than most of you even lived. And uh, it's been interesting to see the evolution. Now I'm going into something right now that is very common during COVID. Uh, okay, when do I, here's a question that just came. When do you prefer an onlay versus full crown coverage? An onlay is highly advantageous if the facial and lingual, or particularly the facial surface of the tooth is good. I have onlays in my own mouth on premolars. My dad was a sugar manufacturer. And do I have to say any more? When I got to dental school, I had a lot of big old amalgams and miscellaneous things. But the, I was a young kid. I went to dental school at a young age, got out at a young age. That's why I've been practicing so long. And so we put, well, what do you think they would put in 61 years ago? It was uh, student done and they were gold. They're still there. They're still there. Uh, the onlay is wonderful if the facial surface is excellent and not going to be a color distraction. These are, these are gold, and if I smiled big, you wouldn't even see them. But, but what is an onlay? Uh, Mimi, you ask if, if an onlay. Now, what's an onlay? Third party in the U.S. will pay for even one cusp cover. Don't go there. We've done quite a few studies on onlays that cover all the cusps versus onlays that will cover one or two cusps, such as Sarac and Plan Mecca and others are promoting. Don't do them. I've been practicing a long time. I have done it with no exaggeration. Well, you don't even want to hear 30,000 crowns. So I've seen a lot of onlays and crowns. No question. A lot of them are in the same mouths. Which one fails first? Do I even have to say it? The onlay without total coverage of cusp. We can hardly turn the Instron machine on before pop, that cusp falls off. So uh, cover the cusp. If you're gonna do an onlay, cover the cusp. And you will get in the US the same kind of payment you will get for a crown. And the peridon peridontium is still intact. You're not gonna get a lot of trouble there. I would, I would suggest uh, in my own mouth, I had to have it done again, there would be on legs if there was a buckled surface that was good. But, 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 but last year, Tom Lamoli, the guru of third party payment in America said, when I asked him, Tom, what percent of indirect restorations last year were on legs in, in uh, the US? You don't want to hear it, 2%. And most of those were Sarah and Plan Make a Fit users. It's a very good question, by the way. Okay, this is a very recent, well, what? Recent, within the last year. Patient who uh, I had not treated before. I, I, I didn't know anything about her oral condition. She's a lady, 60-ish. Uh, and uh, as you look at that, she had pain in that quadrant, lower right quadrant. Well, I don't see anything wrong with it, do you? By the way, radiographs are horrible. If you get me on a roll, I would tell you how bad they are. They're all CMOS sensors, and although you think one for $12,000 is going to be a better than one for $5,000, you are definitely wrong. They're all the same sensor, uh, CMOS, and uh, until we get new forms of, of sensors coming out, it's going to be still another five years. So something like that happens. You don't see hardly anything. I, the, the tooth that I had that I told you I lost, uh, my staff did four varieties of radiographs on that tooth. What? They did periapical such as that. They did an external bite wing, which some of you don't even know what I'm talking about. That's uh, you get just the posterior, and because of the robot arms on it, it doesn't overlap the teeth hardly at all, uh, such as a uh, a typical panoramic would. And then they did a, uh, a combing, and then they did an internal bite wing. And do you know every single one of those contradicted the others? Radiographs of today 
are far worse than the old analog, far worse. But we're not going back to analog because we can't store the analogs well and they degenerate and blah, blah, blah. We're with digital, just fine enough that your manufacturers get the message. You guys got to change the manufacturers. All right, what are we going to do? Do the normal stuff. You're going to take out your trinket. I didn't see anything wrong with anything there. And uh, get your two suits. If you don't have that, you're, you're 40 years behind. You've been around forever. And uh, use it in the proper way. And by the way, educate the dental assistant how to do that. That's no, that dentist don't, doesn't need to be there doing that. And make sure they know how to put it on the cusp and not just bite down on the cusp, but jiggle it, facial lingual, mesial distal, facial lingual, mesial distal, and what are you going to find on that particular tooth? That was the only thing. I thought it would be that endo tooth. I thought that endo uh, might have something wrong in an area that I would need a cone beam to determine if there was something wrong. It was that cusp. Hmm. You get just a hint of it if you look right there. You can see some slight hint. Now, I'm going to give you a a technique that saves me thousands of dollars over the years. What is it? I'm, I'll tell the patient, we're going to treat that tooth. We know that's your painful tooth. We're going to treat it as though it's not painful. How do you do that? Well, we will make a tooth preparation on it. We'll trim down, I'm talking to the patient now, we'll trim down the external and a little on the top. And uh, we will make an impression of it. And we will, uh, we will hold that impression digitally or uh, conventionally. We'll hold that until we have put a temporary on. You've taken it home. And then we'll tell them how to do it. They're going to put a wooden pencil over that about uh, two days after we did the temporary on it. And I want them to chew left, right, left, right, forward, right, forward, back. And we'll be on the telephone, not me, the staff. And if it's still hurting, uh, uh, we'll bring them in. We'll put another temporary on it, same temporary, another temporary cementation. And it will not be non-eugenol because that actually makes sensitivity in 15% of the teeth. It will be a uh, eugenol type temporary. And we'll send them home again. And this very patient that happened to, you'll see the net result. By the way, I didn't do any of this dentistry. I don't know where it was done. Okay, then what's going on? Okay, well, uh, her mouth looks like a thing shade guide, as you can see. Uh, and uh, we're going to do that too. So if they can get somewhere in the ballpark of these miscellaneous colors, we'll be happy. And uh, then I'll prep it. And unless we just see overtly, there, there's your crack. Can you see it? It's running clear on over into here. I don't know if that's internally. I don't know if it is going to just break that cusp off. I don't know if it's in the pulp. We'll soon know. Okay, not, not finitely, but we will know enough. Okay, there was the prep with a little goober stuck on that margin. And the temporary made by a dental assistant. And uh, the impression we did conventional on this one. So by the way, that's one thing we're seeing and that's why I, I, I'm making a, one of our videos coming up in 24 days on how to make an impression. Oh my gosh, I thought I learned that in dental school. I'm sorry. The large labs tell us 90, 90, 90% 90 of impressions coming into the large labs either segregate from the tray or they don't show the margins or both. If I showed you what they look like, you would be appalled. Obviously the margins up underneath that, and you can see a little bit of it there, the rest all, all internally. And uh, now what, where are we now? Uh, we elected to do uh, the zirconia crown and it was part of one of my wife's studies. So it's not particularly the quality we normally do. And uh, there it is cemented. Now, I'm going to leave it slightly out of occlusion. And if you don't know what you're looking at here, this is Kerr occlusal indicator wax. You can see here, that's the second molar, first molar, second premolar. You can see it's light. It'll take about 
two weeks to come in heavier and it'll take about six weeks to be similar to the other teeth there. I don't want to over traumatize it. Be careful with your zirconia crowns. Many of the labs are making the zirconia crowns. That one is about 60 microns low, which is about one human hair low. Some of the labs are making them 500 microns. That's a half a millimeter low. Uh, you uh, get the curved clusal indicator wax, you'll soon be able to tell what's going on uh, without a lot of sophisticated uh, mathematics. Just stick that wax in there, let them lick the teeth before you do and grind around. And if you're seeing no contact, I guarantee you, you will on a lot of them. You'll see no contact at all. Why do they do that? They do that because they want you to ask the patient, how does that feel? I don't feel nothing. Nothing touches but it'll be months till 500 microns has extruded. Unbelievable mess we're seeing now. Well, there was then the, the crown, the second molar, and uh, there was the crown in place. Now, what happened with this patient? What happened with her? Let's look at, uh, I, I have no secrets. You want to take pictures of anything I got, go ahead. Whatever I say today won't be right in a year anyway, because it changes that fast. Look down the line and it basically is saying what I have already said to you. Educate, tooth sleuth or some similar thing. Prepare it as though nothing's wrong. Number three, four. This is your something you are not doing unless you're in the 30% that are. We have proven this, when I say we, it's mainly my wife, Dr. Ella, the microbiologist, and her team. We have, we have looked at many chemicals that allegedly would disinfect the tooth. Pretty interesting what we've seen. We looked at chlorhexine gluconate. It disinfects, but it does not desensitize. Uh, by the way, it doesn't kill viruses either, uh, chlorhexine. I love it on the hands. I love it as a rinse. You know, you go 4% hands, 2% chlorhexidine uh, in, in certain, well, Ultradent has a lot of it. I truly respect Ultradent as a disinfectant on uh, before um, cementation. And you've got it down at 0.12% as a rinse. Been around all my career, 60 years. Invented in Manchester, England. Wonderful material for microorganisms, not viruses. So we looked also at benzoconium chloride. It'll do both. But it has to be so concentrated, it's quite toxic. Uh, but it would do it. In fact, there's a new material coming out that I will show you later in this presentation, coming from Israel, that will have benzoconium chloride not exuding out of the prep, but with a positive negative charge with the organisms, it doesn't exhaust. You'll see it in a few minutes. It's called, uh, well, I'll, I'll wait for a minute, Infinix. You'll see it in a minute. Uh, it's probably one of the major breakthroughs of this year coming, uh, coming from overseas. Well, anyway, we looked also at, uh, well, uh, benzoconium chloride, I told you that one. We, we looked at the sodium uh, hypochlorite, the stuff you're using in endo. It was so wimpy, oh my gosh. Uh, you would have to take a flamethrower to disinfect the bugs after you used that, that was useless. In fact, I wonder why we're still using it in endodontics. Uh, I really do, All around the world, and I'm around there way too much, more, much more, well, toxic materials are used. Even the old Sargenti paste. I, I'm not promoting that. What I'm saying is we're not killing many bugs. In fact, my microbiologist wife, I've got four endos in my mouth. And every time I get one, she says, why don't you just have that tooth taken out? I'll, I'll tell you some of the stories on it. I've been practicing a long time. You do an endo when the patient's 30, 20. Everything's wonderful. You feel that? No. 40, 50, 60. Hey, doc, I'm getting a little, little discomfort out of this too. Well, 
you hope they move out of town, they won't do it. Let's get to 70, a little more, 80. Now my wife's uh, father, his son, my brother-in-law was a dentist and a very good dentist. And I did a lot of his treatment too uh, on my father-in-law. And so it was all pretty decent stuff. But as, it, as he got into that age range of 80 and higher, much of the endo started to fail. I never knew. Every time I'd see him, I'd think, oh boy, we got another endo blowing up. And these were endos that had been okay all through life till then. Uh, unless we get better disinfectants for endo, that's going to continue. Well, in my own mouth with the four, they've been good. Well, last 10 years, occasionally I'll feel one if my immune response is down. So two things to learn there. Don't do endo unless you have to. Do pulp caps, indirect and direct. If it fails, fine, you do endo. It's the, it's the next to the last resort. What's the last resort? An implant? The last resort. I'm seeing so many of these all on four cases. Now I can barf. I'm not kidding. Uh, they're ripping out excellent teeth, taking off four or five millimeters of bone. And yes, I've done it, but only when mandatory. I'm seeing bucketfuls of teeth come out of some of these offices that could have been saved. It's pathetic. Absolutely pathetic. There's nothing like a vital tooth, vital tooth. As soon as you kill it, all the research shows that's a second class tooth from now on. The bridges don't last as long, the teeth crack more. So uh, I've said something pretty important, I hope you got it. And it's, look, it's looking through the eyes of a geezer. Okay, disinfect it. And how did we learn about glutaraldehyde? Dr. Rell has been on it for oh, 50 years. It was initially as a, Instrument disinfectant, remember Cava? Well, we, we had we had a whole flock of them without naming them uh, that we soaked instruments in. Did they do a job? Yeah, they did a job. In fact, your endoscopes, you're going in for one of those delightful colonoscopies. Mm -hmm. You want to be the first patient. You got any message yet? You want to be the first patient because it takes for total disinfection about nine hours for uh, uh, acidic glutaraldehyde or, or a, a basic glutaraldehyde to work. I hope you got the message. If I go and thank goodness I'm so old, I don't have, any, have to have any more colonoscopies, but I've always said I want to be the first one because you hope they've had it in some glutaraldehyde all night. You can't cook it, as you know, or you screw it up. Okay, what's MTA? We're going into it in just a minute. Mineral trioxide aggregate. That's going to go over wherever that glutaraldehyde has been placed to, listen carefully, this is important. When you put the glutaraldehyde on that crack or tooth preparation or whatever, crown preparation or in the composite pre pre preparation, two one minute applications. We've tested that just impeccably. It takes two to adequately carry the glutaraldehyde to the pulp and you will kill just about everything that's there. You want to see some of the electron microscopy that Dr. Rell has done on that. It's the only thing we could get to do that. That is what, what do you call that? Gluma, G-L-U-M-A, G-L-U-M-A was the original product. A much less expensive product is one from Zest, Z-E-S-T. And it's called micro prime. It's 600% less than Gluma. And uh, if you're a Canadian, some of you probably are, uh, you've got a neat little company in Canada, um, the Clinician's Choice, and theirs is called G5, standing for 5% glutaraldehyde. And obviously, it's got some EMA in it, uh, hydroxyethylmethacrylate. That's what, that's a wetting agent. That's what carries the stuff to the pulp. Okay, so you're going to disinfect it. And what does MTA do? One of the very, very few things that actually helps the tooth to recreate some new hydroxyl appetite. That's it. I'll give you the brand names in a minute. Make the impression just like nothing's wrong. Cement it, what did I say? ZOE, not non-ZOE. In fact, I would huck that. 
non-ZOE was brought out <clears throat> since it didn't have a clove taste and it was inert. And it felt good for about a week, but then it started to get sensitive in 15% of the cases in our studies. Stay with ZOE. I only use non-ZOE on a person who has known allergies to what? Essential oils. Call the patient, not you, the staff, and instruct them how to place a wood pencil, which will dent and not, not break anything, on the occlusal surface of the provisional and have them move the jaw everywhere. If no pain, fabricate the restoration, send it to the lab or uh, mill it if you're doing that. By the way, only about 10% of Americans have milling uh, machines in their office. I don't know the exact number in Canada. Uh, if pain when biting on the pencil, a prognosis is fair. The patient I just showed you had a mild amount of pain still at that two day level. Uh, Valinda, our head assistant, called the patient back in, took off the temporary, re-cemented with eugenol, and it promptly went away. Subsequently, the Crown received to bring him back in for a discussion, though if it won't go away, now you got a heavy duty choice because you've already got time and energy and effort into it. If you go endo on them only, you got another $1,000. Um, and that it's a gamble because you don't know where that crack went. But here's the good news. 90% of these cracks will be healed unless it's some grotesque thing by this simple procedure I've given you. 10%, you're down here making a hard decision. We're gonna take that baby out. So this is your informed consent. You give the patient these choices. Endo and a crown. <laughs> there went a thousand and another thousand. That's a that's a heavy gamble. Extraction, and then you got a few thousand to replace that. Okay, enough on that. I'm going to take you to another thing that's uh, that's um, common during COVID. There there are several studies on the cracked tooth, broken tooth during during COVID, and I myself have a mild TMD right there, and I've I've never had a TMD before, so I must be grinding my teeth during the night. And first thing you do too. That's what happens. That's my psychology PhD that tells me that. I want to show you something really crazy. If you're looking for a resorption, you've seen it. If you're not looking, you don't even know what I'm talking about. You want to see a bad one? You're looking at it. That's one of the worst I have ever seen. But if you just look at the teeth, everything looks cool. I don't need no x-rays. Have you had patients say that? Look at my teeth, they're wonderful. I don't need x-rays. Huh. That's the worst case I've ever seen. That was related to aligners. Hmm. Am I against aligners? No, we were the first ones to study them. Uh, that many years ago, Invisalign was right. This right in this building was the the first evaluation of Invisalign. And along came Clear Protect and a lot of others, and then came the Hocus Pocus types out in the field where you get any podung lab to make the things, and then the patient himself sticks it in, and you're looking at it right now. It's time to to get some control over this this ridiculous thing that's happening in ortho right now. Don't think the orthodontists aren't upset. Will they use aligners? Yeah, orthodontists will on certain few cases, but to make it uh, just a end all, do all thing is ridiculous. What happened to her at age 17? They're in a bucket right now. They're in a bucket. Well, that's bad right there. Let's let's do an easier one that you're, going, you're probably gonna see in the next month or so. This was, an initial radiograph that was brought in by a 18-year-old girl. Some dentist had placed a restoration uh, a deeply below gingiva, leaving some of the uh, uh, resorption. You've got internal and external resorption. And we think this was internal. You'll see why in a minute. So that dentist wanted to do um, an implant. 
this girl is a beautiful young girl and she smiled clear over her nose holes practically. It wasn't a gummy smile, but it was definitely showing, oh, three or four millimeters of gingiva. I've done a lot of implants and I can tell you very clearly, it's about 50% of the time when I put an implant in the front and they're showing gingiva that I think, oh, that really looks good. The other 50, you know, I could do better with a cantilever or a bridge or leaving the natural tooth. So I'm, I'm not, as, not as eager to jump to the implant as many are. This guy that did that was. So I, I don't know how she got my name, but anyway, she got in. And I said, look, we can give this a try. So what did we do? I'll give you the technique in detail in a minute. But uh, we went in and you can see I'm close to the outside. I think the next ray, x-ray shows I wasn't at the outside. And now obviously the tooth needs endo. So uh, we did endo and uh, there's the endo. There, I see there's a little bit of tooth left there. I, I didn't see anything where we had perfed. The more opaque stuff is MTA paste. The less opaque stuff is uh, composite resin, but we're gonna give you the technique. Yeah, this shows it very well too. Now she, she actually had ortho done on that after, and this was, what, uh, three years? I, uh, my computer is covering that. Yeah, three years. It's now been five years. That's an old slide, but it's so classic. I thought uh, I would show it to you. Uh, as we, um, oh, as I got her in, uh, she's had quite a few recalls since we did that. And every time I'm looking very cautiously to see if something's going on there and we've had nothing go on. But I think, very candidly, we're using the right stuff. We did a CR study on, um, on the types of endo that people are doing, because every one of these groups will, in the old guy will say, I don't need none of this junk. So you can see what we've got here. We've got the, uh, the, the various forms of doing endo here. Uh, you can see uh, what you've got there, uh, the popular brands across the top, and the number that prefer each one of the kinds of various uh, endos. Um, I'm gonna read the CR survey a little bit of it. There's been a gradual shift away from cold lateral. It's down at 18%, but as far as the overall success rate, those numbers are not statistically significant. They are they're the same. Okay, I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, there's been a gradual shift away from that, but a lot of the old guys have been on it. It's worked for whatever number of years are going to stay there. Now you can see you've, you've got, uh, here's the gutta perch on a stick over here where you jam it in, as you know. You've got different levels and, and look, that's the most popular. You can see the brand names, Wave 1, Densply, Serona, uh, uh, Endo Sequence from Brasser, Edge, Edge 1 from Edge Endo. That, that one is so low cost, it's absolutely absurd. These, these will be 20-ish dollars per file. These will be six or eight dollars per file. We found almost no differences. Okay, 29% uh, there and you well, can see it. What I'm trying to say is don't think because you're using whatever, it's the best. We found no difference across there at all in the, in the surveys. Usually our surveys include about a thousand dentists. Theracal is one of the things you could have put in there. What's Theracal? It's a hydrophilic resin with calcium silicate in it. Calcium silicate, that's not MTA paste, but it's close. It does the same kind of thing. Uh, and then here's the one I want you to, we'll, we'll stay here for a minute. MTA flow, mineral trioxide aggregate. If you remember that, and I think most people know, that is literally <laughs> Portland concrete, Portland cement, the same stuff that's in your driveway. Just by chance, it was found at Loma Linda University in the 90s that when you put that in the tooth, lo and behold, <laughs> it helped create new hydroxyl appetite. Uh, however, the original brand names there were, were very expensive. 
and MTA flow now, you can you can get one of these things done, such as pulpotomy, pulp capping, root end filling, with explication, perforation, repair, root absorption, which is what we're on, uh, for about six or seven dollars. Uh, there's a whitish color and there's a gray color if you're not concerned with the color. Uh, look seriously at that and uh, let's see, I'm going to give you a suggested uh, suggested treatment right now for that for what you saw me do on that that thing. Radiograph. Uh, cone beam is best, but I know only 10% of you have it if, if you're normal. Uh, in many countries, it's far higher than that. We in North America are quite behind on that because they weren't invented there. They were invented in Finland. I don't know. I've never seen a drunken Finn that wasn't drunken, I should say. I don't know how they had enough brains to do it, but they did. Every time I watched that thing going around the head, I think, who figured that out? Make dry operating field, whatever you have to do. On that one that I just showed you, I had to, to make a, a vertical decision, a tooth distal to it, lay a flap, find that thing, restore it, which is it was perfect on the facial, but not on the lateral, put the restoration in with this technique, suture it back, make sure you're back far enough that the scar is not going to show. And uh, it didn't on that woman. Remove the soft junk, but at least a millimeter additional. We just did a survey on this because I was the main author on one of the CR reports recently where this was one of the major topics. And uh, we found a higher percentage than I thought. If I remember correctly, it was in the 20s. We're just ripping the tooth. They weren't even giving them a chance. I think that's incorrect. Okay, remove an additional one millimeter. It's much like cancer. If I have a cancer on my forehead there, uh, squamous cell, basal cell, or worse, melanoma, that melanoma, they'll take 13 millimeters each side. The others, they won't take as much. It's much like cancer. If you don't get into the good stuff, you're dead. So go over another millimeter everywhere, place two one minute applications to glue it out. Like, don't wash it off, suction it only. Place the MTA, your choice. That's definitely my choice. And it was of the survey we just did. Accomplish your normal bonding, place whatever you want in there and instruct the patient of what you expect. Now, somebody asked a question. What about ZOE temporary cements as effect on permanent resin cements? I know somebody spoon fed you that nonsense. I don't know how that got into academics. Uh, if I, I'm right next to a ski area and dentists will come in from time to time and say, I need whatever. And they're usually crowns. And they're often anterior crowns. Okay, I'm, I'm going to go skiing. It's Monday. Can you have them done by Wednesday? Uh, yeah, if we rush the guy. In fact, I'd usually line that up before. That is correct. That question is correct if it's two or three days later. But our research has shown very clearly that we've done three projects on this, so I'm not dreaming. Uh, if we wait 10 days to two weeks, and if you're doing uh, typical uh, dentistry, that's exactly the time that most dentists would seat the crown after the tooth had a chance to recover. Although I love one day dentistry, it's brutal on the teeth. When you cut down a molar, you beheaded, best word I can use, three million dentinal canals, one molar, anterior one million. They're just sitting there oozing juices. If you put a, a phase microscope, you would see liquid coming out of every one of those little two to five micron diameter holes. How do you think the tooth feels? Oh, I'm going to put an acidic cement on there. <laughs> and the tooth gasps. And that's why we get many questions from one day dentists who say, I love my Sarah, but I have sensitivity often. If you've got a real deep prep and it's looking pink to you, you haven't exposed it, it's time to give that tooth a little rest. When you put an abundant essential oil on, by the time that has worked, 
the tooth is desensitized. So don't rush. I'm not against one day dentistry, but just don't overdo it. And when you're deep and looking pink, if you're doing Saracu, playing like a fit or others, glide well. If it's looking pink, for sure, put some of that uh, MTA in or other things that we could talk about. Vitramon Plus, Fuji Lining, Cement. There are quite a few pro, uh, uh, active materials. All right. Uh, if I wait 10 days to two weeks on this question that just came to me, it has no effect on the resin cements or the resin modified glass on its cements at all. And I'll stand on that one. Uh, although somehow it got into academics and they're teaching, oh, don't use that because the, then the resin cement won't work. It wouldn't if I did it two or three days later, no problem, 10 days to two weeks. Place MTA, just a little bit. Accomplish your normal bonding procedure, place whatever, and accept the patient like expect. There you go. There you go. Now, let's see. This one I think you'll enjoy. I somewhat condemned these things. Have I done any of them? Oh my gosh. I took my original uh, implant surgery course from Branham Mark himself. And then we were doing what? That was 30 years ago, 29 years ago. We were doing six implants in, in the pre maxilla in the anterior to the sinus. We're doing six implants anterior to the uh, travel canal with the uh, metal framework. And then a centimeter um, uh, cantilever stick and distal. I've done so many of those. So when all on four came, I thought, now hmm, that's interesting. Because in doing a lot of these things, and the one on the lower right is one, one that had been in 20 years at that point that I had done. Okay, well, when I've done a lot of them and did six, guess what? Quite a few of them would lose one implant. And a few would lose two implants. I like spare tires. In like fact, some of these new cars now that have just four tires and then call the highway patrol, forget it. I don't even like that. I don't like no spare tire. If you've got four, you need a spare tire somewhere because some, some of those are gonna fail and you're down 20 grand, 20 grand. Uh, so uh, this this is that, and that this is back when we thought you needed a ton of implants, and uh, that that's been around a long time. But this was screw through the screw through the teeth. We're not doing that anymore. We're using the um, Zest Dental Solutions F for fixed F T X standing for treatment fixed treatment. So I'm not against it. However. Uh, what are the advantages of a fixed prosthesis for an edentulous patient? First of all, they have to the mortgage the home. That's a disadvantage. Uh, if they have a ton of money, no problem. Uh, they don't have to remove it. It feels similar to natural teeth. Yeah. It doesn't move during eating. And especially for women, and I'm not sexist in saying this, women are just more psychologically uh, oriented and more aesthetically oriented than men provides psychological up. I have my teeth, I have my teeth. Uh, but is there a downside? Is there a downside? Now, what if I put four standard diameter implants and I put locators or ERAs or the new stern goals, which are excellent. And that's one where I've done that. Now, what would be the advantage of doing that instead of putting a fixed on it? I'm, I'm pausing to let you think for 30 seconds. What would be the advantages of removable? We polled our most senior CR evaluators. We have 450 CR evaluators. We're in 100,000 practices in 93 countries at this point. We polled the most senior of the uh, CR evaluators. And this is what we got as advantages of removable. And here was the question. We asked them, if you were a dentist, Dr. So-and-so, 
would you rather have fixed or removable? Look at them. It's not nearly as wimpy as that list, except for some who are just so enamored with having to have it fixed. Some of the things that we see coming in on some of these poorly done all on fours is pathetic. We had a patient come in a while ago from Atlanta, moved here to Utah. When she walked in the front door of the office, I was in an operatory about 30 feet away from the front door. And I thought, somebody's messed her pants. I had no idea what that could happen. And then she came in. Somebody in that other location had not opened up the pontic areas enough to let her clean. When I took that off, that flesh under there looked like a dead person. It was white. The stench was awful. It took us several hours to clean it out of the office. Now that's a bizarre example. Can they clean <laughs> a removable one? Of course. You're in a restaurant, you're eating uh, whatever, lobster or something that's, that's fairly rigid like that, and it's stuck here and there. Pardon me, I gotta go to the bathroom. Out. Clean, 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 clean. Put it back in, I'm back. How hard is that? Is that worth the disadvantages of these things? I think it's time to look very serious at where we are with, uh, with these uh, all on fours. Uh, our, our evaluators were certainly negative about it with a few exceptions. I still do some if mandatory. But the wanton removal of teeth that I'm now seeing is not, it's malpractice. I'll just say it straight up. Malpractice. When you take off five millimeters of bone, five millimeters of bone, and you stick four screws in, when that fails, and I'm treating one right now, when that fails, there's no bone. Where are you going now? Well, I have some, I have some resolutions to that. By the way, our we have 15 two-day courses. If you took all 15 of them, you would essentially have a 2021 state-of-the-art dental education. And it wouldn't cost you $400,000 as, as your current dental education has costed. It's a, it's a token compared to that. I'll give you a little more information on it later. I had to throw in this miserable thing, not for long, but I'm not going to tell you anything old. We're going new here with you for a minute. Uh, Dr. Rella is one of the smartest people I know. I've been living with her 61 years now. People said we couldn't work together. Uh, we learned how to do it. I said before, you got a lot of information on the homepage of the crcliniciansreport.org. There it is. If you go to the homepage, this is complimentary. There's a lot of stuff. You could spend all tomorrow reading that if you wanted to. And it is state of the art infection control. That's all inexpensive. It's no cost at all. However, right now they're, they're on, uh, Rella and her team are on uh, aerosols, which seems to be the big frenzy right now. I, I'm pausing because I could get irritated the more I think about it. This is definitely, definitely irrevocably a buyer's beware market. What we're seeing is every Tom, Dick, and Harry who's, who's got a sucking machine is selling you some trinket for a thousand to ten thousand dollars. I want to show you some real world stuff. We're seeing everything you can imagine everything you can imagine that have been coming in and out. Track Research is our nonprofit in vivo research group that Relleran, uh, it's part of Genesis Report. That didn't work, that didn't work, that didn't work, that had a mild effect, uh, that had a mild effect, that didn't work, that didn't work, okay? Now here's Rella over here. And she's got, uh, let's just uh, explain it to you. The hand piece is started. She's just turned it on. There's no external, extra oral suction at all. 
there's no high velocity suction going. There's a console going. What did it do? Nothing, nothing. And, and in fact, Rello was in an office just recently where the guy had got a sophisticated piece of junk. And what was it? He had a little kind of an incense burner going about. I, I, I wasn't there, so I don't know, but it wasn't even a human body's width away. It didn't even alter that little bit of smoke coming up from the incense. These are, these are useless. Now let's turn the handpiece on full. What are you gonna see when the handpiece is on full? Oh my gosh. Do I have to say a thing? I don't think so. By the way, you're looking at what Rella usually wears and I'm pretty similar. Uh, I don't even wear the hat all the time unless I'm uh, doing some aerosol producing thing. These are Googles. I don't know if you know what a Google is. A Google is uh, available from almost any of the companies and it sits on there uh, in front of your glasses. Uh, and, and you have trouble if you're gonna wear loops all the time. This is a N95 mask, which if you're doing a lot of aerosol, you need to have. If you're not doing a lot of aerosol, you don't need to have. All that does is screw your lungs up. Uh, so we're back to a level two. I'm back to a level two or three mask, just a surgical mask. Um, they've over touted this so heavily. I told you before, I've lived through four or five pandemoniums before and I'm still here. And I knew nothing about some of this stuff. Okay, let's just turn something on. We got a console going again, just a nice weight to hold down the floor. What happened there? Handpiece going, no extra oil suction, just this fellow. High velocity evacuation. What do you think about that? Just that one thing used properly. And I'll bet nine tenths of you don't know what properly is. I'll show you in just a second. The most important thing you have in your entire office for aerosols is that, that. And we've really proven it. Let's keep going. Denson Chow, a man uh, who used to work for us, a Chinese man. Uh, we helped him get through a PhD program here. And he's now got hundreds of employees in China. He's made 70% of the lasers in North America. He, he had one of the best devices of these external suckers that are right next to the patient. However, she's looking through, now she's got a normal shield on. She's looking through her glasses. She's looking through the shield and she's looking through there. Can you even find the tooth? I doubt it. So there's some problems with some of those suckers that are essentially elephant trunks, okay? Wake up now if you're dozing. There's the proper placement of high velocity. If you really want to be ideal, and I know only 6% of you are, six, we know that, you'd use a rubber dam. If you're using something else, there are a couple of things that would be close. Um, the uh, Isolite 2 is excellent. The Mr. Thirsty is excellent. A denta pop, D E N T A pop, denta pop is good, but uh, none of them are quite like a rubber dam. What does a rubber dam do? It attracts the ginger. And don't use light and medium weight, which you probably learned in school. Heavy weight rubber dam. A dental system with any hands at all should be able to put one on in one minute, a simple one like that. Now keep looking. This is pretty close to that premolar that I'm gonna hack on. Now we've got what? This is again showing how, how difficult it would be to work with this gadget. Can you see that? You're looking through all this garbage. Handpiece on full, extra oral sucker going, and HVE. Another thing with these, and this is one of the best ones, is that the sound drives me out of my mind nuts. There's a high pitched whine. I've lost a little hole in my left ear because that's the closest to the hand piece. And uh, I can only stand it a short time. So be careful when somebody's trying to sell you one of these elephant trunks that the sound doesn't bother them. Okay, so what? 
to date, we've not found anything that does it all. Now let, let's look at a list. We wanted a takeaway with a properly placed high velocity suction, 80 to 90% of the aerosol and splatter. 80 to 90%. After testing, the, I don't even know how many of the team has tested. I really don't know. Uh, elephant trunks alone, we must have 10. And that's just a fraction of those that are present. They're almost useless. I tried two this week when I was practicing. Both just drove me nuts within 30 seconds. The sound whining on and the thing right in front of you, you can't see around it. Good luck. All the rest of those, now there, there's 80 to 90%. You wanna to try to get a little better than my other? There you go, let's go down that list. An extra old suction device, if you can stand it. Less water spray. Most North American dentists use far too much water spray. It's like they want to take a shower every patient. Now, if you're using much over 20 cc's of water, how do you figure that out? Get an alginate measuring vial and run your hand piece over it for one minute. You should see somewhere around 20 cc's, even as low as 10. If it's as low as 10, you'll get a little scum on that prep, you know, and the dental assistant should be watching closely. And whenever that's got scum, that white scummy gray junk, one little squirt and it sucks it away, it's gone. So you don't have to have that going like a shower bath on every patient, less water, less or no ultrasonic scaling. In the early part of COVID, we were doing no ultrasonic. Now we're back to almost normal. Appropriate use of face masks, oh boy, the CR report this month will carry information on what's done wrong with face masks. Uh, there's leakage around the nose on most of them, unless you've really adapted it well, there's leakage at the chin. If you have a particularly skinny face, there's leakage all around the edges. Uh, so read that when you get it. More prepping without water, oh, that'll kill the tooth in your dreams. There's research going clear back to the 50s by a guy by the name of Al Shuhard, University of California. What did Al do? He and his team, University of California, uh, prep small preps, small class two, class fives without water. And everybody said, oh, that'll kill the tooth that heats the pulp. I was then a beginning academic assistant professor. We did a heat study. We found that not only did that not heat the tooth, it actually cooled the tooth two degrees C. Uh, light touch, uh, air going, dental assistant sucking the air out, no water. The small prep, I don't use, I don't use water on a small prep, only when there gets a little muck there, the dental assistant will blast it. Now this next one is critical, suction when blowing air. What does that mean? Give me a little air on that, please. They'll blow, and who got that? You, all over you, the patient. Whenever they're blowing to clear the site, they should be sucking. So both hands should be working on that dental assistant. And then I don't have to regurgitate all this junk. Uh, now let, let's look just a little further. I think I have one more slide on that. Oh, well, by the way, there's Rella's video. I hope you'll look at that um, because that's three hours and it is the current stuff on infection control. I've spent too long on infection control, but that was mostly the stuff I've just shown you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Centers for Disease Control, uh, I respect them completely, but I'm sorry, they're so far behind in so many of the things. Clorox, oh, give me a break on surfaces. You want your whole office to smell like a nursing home? No, there's a new uh, rinse out right now too. There's so many rinses out of ad nauseum that most of them do nothing. And even the CDC has recommended hydrogen peroxide, many have, it's almost useless. There's a new rinse out that was in the CR report last month, uh, lowercase letters, I-O rinse, look it up, I-O rinse. That one actually killed COVID. How do you like that? Uh, we, there's another video for you at the end there. Yeah, where are we? We've got a few more minutes here. 
I'm going to give you some on uh, restorative dentistry, which is your bread and butter. Let's do it. What's happening? We're going down to one color. <laughs> the companies, some of them had as high as 50 colors. What were they smoking or dreaming? I don't know. I don't know. Omnichroma, Tokiyama, had a grandfather product called Estelite Sigma Quick. Some of you have probably used it. It was excellent. They didn't market well. And as they didn't market well, only a few dentists got it. I've never found somebody that did not like Estelite Sigma Quick. Now these guys had some vision. I had I had all of their salespeople here a few years ago when they weren't advertising. And I said, you guys have some good products, advertise more. And they started. And now when they brought out Omnichroma, they gave anybody who wanted it a free sample. Is it working? Of course, almost all of you tried it. I don't need to tout that. We have within our group, um, uh, University of Utah faculty member, Mark Durham, you'll hear more about him. He's working intimately with us. And Mark's a prosthodontist, a very talented and, and, and very bright guy. And he is now half time with us. They they made an endowed chair at University of Utah and, and, and I'm not even visible about it. And Rel is named my name. And so that the, the donations that came to that is paying this guy's part of his salary. And he developed uh, the uh, CRU of U test clinic, where he brings in practicing dentists and try we they try all of these things, and that becomes the observational part of these products. It was pretty interesting to see. This one came out high, Omnichroma. Uh, there are a few cases where it's not particularly adequate. Uh, through and through hole on a tooth. There are blockers, but I would be better with the multicolored product there. Uh, uh, no, uh, a class four, I would do better with the multicolored product, and I think most would. But now everybody's getting the message. Uh, along came uh, Densefly with uh, TPH Spectra, and you see they've got five colors plus a toilet bowl here to block things out if you want to. Uh, that, that, that doesn't particularly turn me on, uh, the, these, these colors. I'd be much better with a, a semi-opaque material in the most popular product. What's the most popular product? Filtex Supreme Ultra, you know that. So Filtex Supreme Ultra has the major market in North America. And there, there are four translucencies in that. If I were doing a, a class four, or uh, any kind of through and through class three, I'd be much better putting uh, their, their most opaque color, which is Danton on the lingual. And then body, which is the next uh, least opaque and it would match impeccably. So uh, uh, these reduction in colors is good, but that product was nearly $70 a CC US dollars, 70. So I'm sure they were getting beat up by the less expensive ones. And they said, what are dentists using of these four colors? Not colors, translucency. Dentists were using body, 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 body. They would buy the whole batch, seldom use dentin. About the only thing I use that for is an endo hole. Uh, seldom use enamel and almost never use translucence. What would they use? A2 body. Maybe A3, maybe B1, and maybe a D, and that was it. We don't need 50, or in this company had 30 colors. And so now they package it, as you see there, they package this as Filtech Universal, which is basically just body. So next time you buy, and uh, you've got some colors left over from the original kit you bought, just get Universal. And uh, you will be down to $50 a CC, hallelujah. You can see this is all the colors they have in there. And they used to have 30 in there, give or take. So that's another example. Now one that, uh, well, you can see that those few colors will match the whole old fashioned Vita classical. Their new bond has some advantages. So I would suggest, uh, uh, looking at that OptiBond Extra, all these that are universals have M 
they have MDT in, which bonds slightly to zirconia, and they have silane, which bonds slightly to uh, glass, which is Emacs, isn't it? Okay, uh, let's take a look here. Clear fill is about the only bond that's significantly different. And what's different about that? Basically, uh, the only thing that's different is you don't have to rub as much on it. Most of the bonds are claiming you need a 10 or 20 percent, uh, not percent, second rubbing. Uh, you can see uh, this particular product, they, they put an uh, M, M, not an amine, amide. They put an amide in it. And that amide makes it penetrate without all this rubbing. You're thinking, well, what's 20 seconds? Well, it's 20 seconds. The patient's saying, what's he doing? What's he doing? What are you doing? I'm rubbing, I'm rubbing. I'm still rubbing, I'm still rubbing. It's a long time, you know it. It's a long time when you're doing it. Now, what about lights? Just a few things on lights. There, there was a question. Oh, what do you think about the restorative composite with zirconia. Uh, there are quite a few uh, restorative composites. In fact, you may not know, but the filler in that product, that product, the filler is zirconia down at 20 nanometers. So there are quite a few products that have zirconia in. Zirconia is good, it's very, very highly radiopaque, and uh, I would have no, no question about the zirconia filler. Uh, Blue phase is one innovation. What does it do? It's an excellent light for my repair. It has, it's a smart light and you can read that while I'm talking. Uh, it's expensive, it's give or take 1800 bucks US. But if I move too far away from the resin, what does it do? Pumps up the time. If I, unconsciously move away from the site, what does it do? <laughs> and quits. And that's a kind of a neat innovation. We'll see if others come out with this so-called poly wave. Uh, there, there are some cheap lights out there. Now, what, what do I mean by a cheap light? A thousand, 1100, 1200. A lot of you have, um, a lot of you have several operatories and you have one or two lights. You could afford to get some other lights. And this has the ideal characteristic. It has a right angle. Right angle is state of the art. That previous light did not have a right angle. It had a 70 degree angle. It's the only negative I find on it. This has a wide orientation on the tip. It has a handle where I can put my thumb right on there and turn it on. And if, 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 if it's got a class five on a second molar, I can rotate this tip. Uh, and it's wireless, Fusion 5. I can't remember exact cost. It's around 1100 or so. Uh, what is the state of the art standard of care right now? Uh, I didn't even pull in some of the older ones. The Velo from Ultradent. The Velo from Ultradent is frankly, well, it's hard to beat it. There, there are quite a few lights coming out right now. If you're reading the CR report, you would know that. Quite a few lights coming out that uh, a couple of them will challenge the Velo, but the Velo Grand is very hard to beat. Uh, 12 millimeter tip, right angle, uh, unbelievable homogeneity of the of the image. Uh, but you got some bucks into it. As with anything good, you got to pay for it. Uh, I want to ding a couple of things. One is this so-called bulk fill frenzy that we're seeing, look at the products. And I've just listed a few of them. What's wrong with bulk fill? What's wrong with it? Nothing wrong with the materials. Uh, they're, they're basically, the standard restorative materials. What's wrong with it is the lights. If you were to take your own lights one by one, I hope you got more than one, and get a white piece of paper out and build up about 10 millimeters of material, like a little triangle pyramid, and then take your light, put it right on the top of that pyramid and cure for the time you're normally curing, the color you're normally using, which is likely to be A2, flip it over and start scratching with your lab knife or pocket knife on the end of it. Seldom, seldom, I don't care what the company's telling you, 
because you you can't get that light positioned right. If you're off, off even five degrees, you lose 80% of the power of the light, five degrees from horizontal to the resin. Uh, you'll scratch that, scratch that thing down, you'll get the average of you will get two millimeters. Bulk fill is a joke. Uh, and we're finding uh, because the polymerization coronally is pulling it up out of the prep, try to find microscopically a box form that does not have a 50 micron opening of the gingival area. Ridiculous. We're running out of time here, aren't we? Now I'll give you a partial cure to that. And it's these new dual cure restorative composites. There are five of them out there now. And uh, we've tested both EZ and Luxacrown very, very thoroughly. And uh, both of them have a cure that is dual. Obviously, you're using light cure. When composites originally came on, which <laughs> I've lived all through it, they were invented in the 50s. They came out in the, in the early 60s. They started promoting them for class twos in 1968. They were horrible failures then, and they're not much better now. A typical class two resin in a GV black size prep, international data is about six years of longevity. If it's a small one done with a very tiny burr, like a 329, 330 on a molar, you're getting up towards of 15 years. As soon as you make that big GV black amputation, you're down to about six years. Anyway, uh, it's time to look seriously at dual cure in a big deep restoration. Maybe you've got a restoration that's 10 millimeters down the box one, clear down to the bone. You're not gonna cure down there all the way. You're like every, every millimeter you go deeper, 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 you've got less cure, less energy, less jewels. These two that, that we've tested, we're using for a lot of different things. Uh, the bulk EZ was the first one to, to really make a, a dent on the market. That's Zest Dental Solutions. And uh, we even make temporary light crowns. I have a whole video on that, but we're out of time. I can't really show that. And the sound's not apparently working on, on a, any big station here. So uh, we will make the same thing you do with the temporary, which is a blue mousse impression. Uh, you uh, take the old crown off, take, uh, take any carries out, reprep it, and, and use this material or this material as the restorative material. This Luxa crown and the actual studies on it, that's coming from DMG in Germany, excellent company. That, that's looking same properties as Filtex Supreme Ultra, but it's dual cure. So you use it just like a temporary and cement it with resin modified glass on it, you've got a great thing. There's another thing that I'll suggest to you, and that is the combination of glass ionomer, and you're saying, I hate glass ionomer. You won't hate the new ones. There's a GV black prep that I never do unless I'm trying to recover from some other dude's amputation. Uh, I've, I've used that purposely in this demonstration because that's the kind that has an open margin. So in the apical part of that would be the glass ionomer where you're gonna get the new carries. And you have glass, whoops, got glass ionomer in the apical part and resin in the coronal part. Does that make some kind of sense? This thing I'm going to show you next is probably the most important thing I've talked about so far. This is coming from Israel. Uh, it is not on the market just yet. It is a scientific development that has been uh, been uh, investigated since uh, 2006. And uh, this is benzoconium chloride and it's impregnated into the filler. And it creates an electric galvanic response. It, it does not degenerate like fluoride. Fluoride starts out really high and within two weeks it's cleared down to fluoridated water level. 
this won't, this does not do that. It's not even the same reaction. So as an organism gets close to it, it kills it. And uh, so far, our whole micro team is ecstatic about what we're seeing. Watch it, screwed up name, Infinix. I don't know quite what that means. Nevertheless, it is, uh, it is coming to you shortly. And they're looking seriously, assuming the research with our group and others look as optimistic as it now looks. It could go on to implants. Maybe that would help eliminate some of the peri-implant types. It could go on ortho brackets. You think about it. So it's not going to be one product. It could be multiple products. Watch it. If you get nothing from us tonight, you got that to look for soon. Flowable, standard, bulk. And if if you want something from us, that's me personally doing uh, the major types of composite resin restorations, including, uh, well, that's class twos. Uh, I have another video similar to it, uh, 3501, that is me doing, well, it's, it's, I'm saying this wrong. The top one is the uh, 3582, and the bottom one is class twos. You do that, your resins are going to stay in a lot longer than six years, I can guarantee you. How long have I been doing this? To over 60 years, 60 years on class two. We were some of the original experimentation. Where are we with restorative? There you are with restorative. The products for operative of last year, 2020, were excellent. That's when they started to have these uh, unicolors or uh, fewer colors. And if you're pleased where you are, if, if you really had me in a two day course, in fact, we have a two day course going tomorrow and the next day. And uh, if you're interested, you can still call tccdental.com. And that's two days on preventive, aesthetic, operative, veneers. And it's, unfortunately, it's my hands if, if it were live. And, we're going live. We're going live with all our courses next week. I'm ecstatic. Next week, a hundred of these things is enough, and that's what I've done so far. Uh, uh, restorative energy is not going away. People eat garbage and won't clean the garbage off. You know it. It's not going to change. I am a PhD psychologist. I can tell you, human behavior is set at age three. It's genetic. Uh, and you're not going to change it much. You hygienists can hammer all you want. You won't, you won't make a significant change for very long. You know, a, a few, I've, I've practiced with world-class periodontists, and I'll tell you, it's still an uphill battle. Well, I have to give you a little hype here. Uh, we have a special COVID discount for you. When you go to our websites and you see anything you want there, Use that code, Intel I321, and you get 20% off till April 2. There, you can either call or you can go to pcgdemo.com. And uh, the catalog is, is repeat. The catalog is a, an entire dental education. Well, no, not the catalog, but the content of it. And our most, uh, our, our most popular videos right now, uh, out of the 70 that we have, they're all, they're all one hour, you're looking at them. The new glass ionomers, and I didn't, uh, didn't put them in this particular little mini course, the new glass ionomers, Equia, Equia, word name, E-Q-U-I-A, Equia Forte, and Keytac Universal, Keytac Universal, Go to a putty stage. They don't. They're not sticky, and the new glass on them is really working. That that's a full hour on uh, preventive and glass ionomers. Uh, there's the one on class two that's still very popular. We made that quite a while ago. Um, quite a few things on there. Here's uh, Wendy Briggs' uh, video that uh, she did with me asking the questions. Dental hygiene to the next level. That'll double your hygiene right there. And you got none of this in dental school, did you? If I, if I was sitting in front of you and asked who got apicoectomies, phrenectomies, biopsy, maybe 5% of you. 
This is Carl Kerner and me talking about all these things. We do have any sections in there too. Well, lots of stuff going on and I'd really like to see you in Utah. If you can't find something to do in Utah, something wrong with you, look at those names. You'll recognize every name on there, I think. We've got two gods of Endo, West and Ruddle. David Wright is an unbelievable general practice orthodontist. He does everything. Uh, the Suzuki's try to find better periodontists. And then uh, Wise Carver and Spencer in sleep medicine, go for it. And the ultimate we have is right there. And that is what? That is the all so-called all access pass. So uh, ask him about that. And for sure, we hope you got something out of there. That was the first, the first live course we did. And look, look, oh, that was just recently. We went into a live course right there. And that I'm not stupid enough to do that. That guy's probably already crushed his brains and everything down the bottom. That's Utah though. So uh, that's to, to warn you, we are going live. It's time to crawl out from underneath that rock. Well, where have we been? We've had a lot of topics. I hope you got something out of this. And uh, I uh, sincerely congratulate uh, Jerem uh, Dasher for putting these programs together. Uh, during this COVID time, can you imagine where we would have been had we not had Zoom? Zoom, by the way, is by far the best platform at this point. I've used four or five platforms. One of them took a half hour even to get on it. So uh, I'm sure many of our courses, not many, some of our courses will stay virtual, but the majority are gonna go back to live. Unless you see me out on the circuit, I usually do about 80 to 100 courses a year. Good to talk to you and congratulations to Jerem and uh, the Intel group. I, I think you're doing a marvelous service and it's been my pleasure to spend a few moments with you.